Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. Um, so, building a drum synth today, and uh, this is a kit that I got on Etsy, and I'll show you what the website and the instruction manual looks like. Um, very inexpensive kit, and no idea really how it sounds, but it looked like a lot of fun and something interesting we can do on stream. So, um, here's what we're working with. Got my little soldering helping hands thing. I didn't end up ordering a, a new one of them um, yet, but I think I will probably. And here's the body of it. I'm not sure what, this seems like a, like a circuit board sort of material, but uh, not sure. Circuit board, bag of parts. Honestly, I haven't even gone through the instructions yet, but uh, yeah, it seems like a pretty cool kit. So, yeah, I'm just checking what I need. Soldering iron, flush cutters, pliers. I wonder if like, any of the wires are already pre-cut. Now there's the like built-in um, trigger thing. There's actually no other wires. <laughs> I'm just gonna go through the thing quickly. This is actually how it how to use it. Let's do. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. It's showing trigger input. There's a sensitivity knob. Knob. Uh, you can control the envelope for the decay. There's an LFO and a VCO. You can CV in for pitch. There's a an attack, just switch. And a VCA out for volume. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is the how-to. This is not for the kit, but once it's assembled. So um, I don't, I'm not sure how long I'm going to go for today. Um, usually don't stream like longer than an hour, but I have until two today. It's only 10.15 now. Um, so I wanna at least get an hour of progress on this. Uh, welcome everyone. Hi Jason, hi Benny, hi Alki, hi Roving Eye, and Danny. How are you doing? Okay. Um, so, the Racket Drum Synth is based on the now rare Boss PC2 AMDEC PCK100 percussion synthesizer. Uh, someone said PC2 is a fun unit. Okay, cool. I, I didn't even real make that connection till now. <laughs> um, we wanted to make a pro we wanted to produce a kit that would not only do sonic justice to the original, but also be able to put our own spin on it with extra modifications, including attack on off PC uh, VCO and LFO um, wave shape selection and pitch CV input. I'll try to make sure this is on screen for you, but it may be difficult. So it's triggered by a piezo disc, which is velocity sensitive, and then you can get different um, differences with the envelope. There's a VCO, optionally modulated with a frequency sweep. There's an LFO and pitch control, external pitch control. So yeah, silk screened artwork on on the uh, interlocking PCBs. The only wires that have to be soldered are the ones going to the disc. So that's pretty cool. It, it seems like a e pretty easy kit. No idea how long it's going to take, but uh, 
Yeah, we'll give it an hour and see how, how it goes. Alright. First is the ICs. So it says, place the ICs, integrated circuits, in the orientation shown. Can you read that? No. Um, a selected LM2904 has a thick white line at one end of the package. Place this upon the IC outline with the corresponding thick black line. Pin 1 is indicated on an 8-pin dip dual inline package IC by a notch at one end or circle at one corner. And one is indicated on the 9-pin SIP single inline package IC by a small indentation and an outline pad on the silk screen. All right, so I don't understand that yet. But let's have a look at what's actually in here. Okay, so there are five ICs. And I take it this is the direction this should be. The stream might be a complete disaster, I don't know. <laughs> Just let me know if you can't see anything, if, uh, if I'm on the wrong camera for too long or anything like that, if I'm clearly doing something wrong. So, this one, yeah, you can't see that at all. I can zoom this in. Uh, hi, Daniel. Uh, the music is from Backing Track, some um, royalty-free streaming music. All right, so taking a wild guess that this, this position here is for this one. I'm gonna have to solder them like one at a time because they're not gonna stay in. Okay, I just bent the pin slightly so that it doesn't fall out when I flip it upside down. Turn up my mic, turn up, turn down the voice. Yeah, wrong way, other way. Let's try that. The soldering iron heats up so fast I forgot. <laughs> I had to double check that I actually turned it on. Because it was already hot. Um, yeah, all right, so I guess let's start on the first one.
Okay, I want to get a, a brush to scrape off the flux. That brush didn't really work at all. So this is just some uh, isopropyl alcohol, just to get rid of the uh, kind of acidic part of the solder, the flux. You don't have to do it, but the things you build tend to last a little bit longer. It looks good. I just want to like keep double checking everything, make sure that uh... yeah, I probably do have a extra toothbrush somewhere that would work. Okay, so first. First IC is in. The second one, okay, the one with the white stripe is here. 2904. I can't see anything here. Like, I feel like I'm. A lot of these ICs, like, you gotta look at it a certain way in the light to be able to read it. They want it this way. If we spend two days on stream and it just doesn't work, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. I keep hearing my cat doing stuff behind the desk and it's distracting. Yeah, alcohol in the toothbrush isn't making it come off either. Yeah, it'll just have to do. All right, so these other ones, are they all the same? No.
just trying to figure out which one is the right one to put in here. The writing is so tiny. And it, they're, the parts I have are not exactly the same as in the instructions. What does this circuit do? This is a um, a recreation of the Boss PC2, um, but like with some modifications. Hang on, my cat is eating wires under the desk. That keeps th things interesting. All right. Yeah, it's, it's actually not even a pedal. It's like a, I don't know. It's like one of those 80s things. Like when they, I don't know. <laughs> it makes some sort of drum sound. I think only one, one sound at a time. It's not like a, a full sample or anything, but Boss has made a ton of different types of uh, products over the years. Yeah, my cat's only um, four months old. Only had him a week. All right, so I've got one more on the board. Pretty slow process, but uh, I do not have a modular synth. This is this is dangerously close to getting there. <laughs> All right, so these must be the last two. Well, 
yeah, with this synth and another one that's arriving today or tomorrow, plus my, uh, what is it? Minilog. Um, I'll have three synths that take CV. And so, nothing that can uh, actually send CV, as far as I know. So, is that right? And one there. I almost put this one upside down. Uh, so, I'm about to solder the last two ICs on this board. Next is one op amp. And I haven't looked too much further in here. A CV source, yeah. A little 16 step sequencer or something like that, you know. Something simple. But actually, I want to figure out if I can send from Reaper CV out. My, my Korg has two CV ins. I've got a little 8-bit um, synth coming. Um, that also has CV control. I think for pitch. Or no, it's uh, octaves over CV. I think there are plugins that can like, convert MIDI to CV. Or, or maybe there's boxes or something that can do that. But I think I want something that's like a a little sequencer you can program in with knobs what the um what the pitches. Uh, I think the idea is not to have a DAW at all. Yeah, I really like Reaper though. So, I want to have a hybrid system so that right MIDI in in any way I want and then control the synths externally. Roving Eye says, I don't really want hardware, but building stuff is so much fun. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, so uh, there's the four or uh, five ICs in there, and I just need to find the transistor next. There's four of them. Oh, okay. The 
there's actually six transistors I need to pay attention to. Okay, so Okay. I'm going to try to find a magnifying glass. No luck. Okay, now you guys are talking about something that I don't, I don't understand. Um, yeah. All right, music stops. Let's go to the next. All right, so I'm looking for the T092 transistor, but I don't know. The instructions show a completely different one here. It says C945. Is this one? It says two and three nine zero six. I guess it's that one. And this other one says three nine zero four. Head magnifier, yeah. Where the hell does that even go? Okay, well, luckily everything is labeled on here. Very tiny, but it is there. And it even has the shape in there, so that's good. Yeah. I know which. I don't think I can actually mess this up. It, there's a note that it has to be no more than the same height as the the IC beside it.
let me know if you guys can't see this, because I keep bringing it closer to me, and I, I bet it keeps going out of frame. I'm half expecting this to uh, have a really cheesy sound, like a 80s toy. But with enough control that it's kind of interesting, and then be able to run it through effects and stuff. Yeah, I have to actually try to Get this one a little bit lower in the socket. All right, so um, I just put in four transistors and is it transistors. Yeah, transistors. I think I was saying op amps before. I don't know if they are the same. Um, what I'm looking for now is if there's any others that go in next. So I'm caught up with this image here. Yeah, okay, so there's the other two. The 945P. Yeah. So that's one here.
op amps are little amps made of trans transistors. Yeah, they're bigger, um, right? And there's usually a heat sink on them. Those ICs probably are op amps, so <laughs> the ICs are op amps. Yeah. Okay. okay. One more transistor. No. Wrong camera. Have a good day, Ken. Diodes next. I'm just trying to find all the spots for the diodes. I only see <laughs> one spot. There's another, okay. Four, eight. No, that's a small one.
Is that it? There's something where the label is rubbed off. a second to look at this closely because I don't want to put this in the wrong spot. It's got to be this spot. It's got to be that spot, but I don't feel confident about it. There's one for a small one, two for a small one, and then three there. And that's the only other spot I see. You can't see what I'm doing? Well, neither can I. It's too tiny. Yeah, I need a head cam. I can't really get this camera closer though, unfortunately. It's got to go above my monitor. Actually, I can probably move that. Hang on. that better? No, it's frozen. And it's upside down.
I don't know. It's closer. Is that backwards? Upside down? It's hard to tell. In my preview. Oh well. So what am I doing? I'm putting in this here. Nope, can't see it at all. It won't focus that close. Right here. I don't think this po camera position's any better. I think it's probably worse. Yeah, you can't see that at all as I'm soldering. camera's not wide enough. Like, wide enough angle. Yeah, that's the problem. It doesn't focus. I, mean, I could try something else. But it, it's not like a macro camera, so up close won't necessarily work. Uh, the other thing I could do is, is use my good camera, but it's a little trickier to get in here. I'll probably be shaky. The foot cam is inset to the main view. Foot cam. What? Oh, for drumming streams. All right, so this is still getting blown out somehow. So, this is where we're at so far with this. Yeah, this, this is a much better camera. You guys wanna send some super chats to fund a second one of these cameras. I only need about uh, $900 <laughs> to do it. But I'd love to have a second one of these cameras for overhead shots. Or just even a second camera to move around so I can keep one locked in uh, in the main camera angle.
All right, where are we at now? So these. All right, so I got three diodes that I'm about to solder. Uh, which you can see here, here, and here. Little red and black ones. All right, so I've put in the last of the diodes and I'm just trimming the loose ends here. All right, so up next, Uh, electrolytic capacitors. 
the long leg goes in the square pad and the short leg and the white line on the capacitor is the same side as the filled silk screen. All right. So that means these ones. The square one is the long leg. The one with the stripe is the other hole. Let's get all these out. What was the first kit you've ever built or first thing you ever soldered? For me, it was a strobe light, and I did it in grade 10, maybe, and yeah, I've had an interest in building stuff since then. All right, so first one I guess I'll do, I don't know if it matters which one I do first, why not? Um, one says 1U. This is 1U. This one says 10U. This is a, also a 1U. Are there more? Heathkit Distortion Booster was your first. Marshall-esque cab sim with op amps. Sounds cool. Still have it somewhere way before IRRs were a thing. What am I using the DIY strobe light for? It eventually broke um, because it wasn't in a very good enclosure. And this is, it's gotta be 20 years ago now, actually. So, um, yeah. Uh, we used to just have it on in my room. We'd like to uh, synchronize it with ceiling fan, so the ceiling fan looked like it was not moving at all. And <laughs> that's about it. Just like a party light. I l always liked the uh, the harsh clicking sound that uh, that it made. Ten. I want to find all these pieces first. That's a 100. That's a 10. This must be a 1. Is it relay based? I don't know. It's like, um, like our electrical shop teacher um, 
give us like a list of things we could b build from like a catalog. And then he got the parts and we had to find our own enclosure for it. Uh, I couldn't tell you much about it now. I know that it had a special bulb and had many capacitors. I think the first time I turned it on, it blew up. But, but then it worked. M4T3 says, yo, what's all this about? Found this in my recommended. Really? Okay, so um, this channel is usually uh, software tutorials for Reaper DAW. But today I'm just soldering a little kit that I bought on Etsy that is like a little drum thing, like an 80s boss drum, not really a drum machine, but like a drum synth. So it's, it'll make bleeps and bloops and stuff, but I gotta put it together first. So I'm working on electrolytic capacitors right now. These are the ones that let smoke out when you do it wrong. It's interesting that it that uh, this video even got recommended. The only thing different I did was put it in a different category. Instead of the music category, I put it in science. So I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Yes, the magic smoke. It smells like popcorn, kind of burnt popcorn. Um, yeah, two more. I gotta say, this kit is, like, one of the easiest things that I've built. It's just, like, there's a lot of pieces. And, but at least everything, like, every piece of it. Everything is labeled and orientation is in the diagram, so it's pretty, pretty easy to do this. And I attempt autofocus for this. Yeah, it's a little slow, but come on. Nope, autofocus just won't do it over here. Hey Mike, what's up? Just doing a little soldering project. Had this on my shelf for a couple months. Just never really had a day to uh, dedicate to it. So I'm gonna try to <clears throat> get as much of this as possible done. Mike, have you ever done a soldering project? Like, I'm pretty sure you've done things like replaced guitar pickups before. I'm just wondering if you've done anything else. Yeah, the new Far Cry looks great. They're always fun. I've got a Far Cry 4, I think. Is that right? I've got Primal and one other one. I think I have 4 and Primal.
You were, you were a robotics tech for Chuck E. Cheese. I don't believe you. All right, so going an hour and 20 minutes-ish. Not quite ready to stop. Um, we're on page 6 out of 14. So... Okay, so mine aren't that close to the PCB, but hopefully that's okay. I'll try to sneak them in a little bit. You don't want to like overheat these. You know, a lot of the sound for um, Far Cry 6 was done in Reaper, right? Um, Primal is very good. It's a, you know, a small self-contained sort of story. <clears throat> Single player only. Is a uh, six have the multiplayer thing? Was it made in trial version of Reaper? <laughs> no, the the whole team in um in Montreal uses Reaper. Um In some of the behind the scenes videos, I think you can spot it. There is co op. That's cool. Okay, so all capacitors are in there, and now LEDs. I am like notoriously bad for getting an. LEDs the wrong way around. Not notoriously. Nobody knew that until I said it. But just like <clears throat> every project I do it takes me th three attempts to get them in there. Uh, short leg in the square pad. Did I do that right? Yeah. My cat keeps licking the window. What the hell? <laughs> so, uh... If anyone hasn't seen the actual kit that I'm building, this is the enclosure it comes with. It's on like a PCB, and I, I think it just snaps to get all the corners. I guess there's no bottom to it, I just realized now. But yeah, pretty cool looking thing. I just wanted to look here if there were more than two LEDs, and I was missing one, but it seems like it's just the two there.
Oh, that was totally out of focus. Sorry. So, yeah, LEDs in. It'll attach something like that. So it's not a full case. It's just kind of like top and sides, looks like. <sighs> Reminds me of the stock photo of the guy holding the soldering iron below the grip. Yeah, on a motherboard, no less. I've been injured pretty badly with soldering irons before. Trying to do something like without these helping hands. And uh, it like, it r fell or rolled or something and it went like right across my palm. I'd, but now I can't even tell which hand it was. I think it was this one. You can't really tell, but there's like the swirls change direction there. Don't do that. Wouldn't recommend it. I've been taking things apart since 20... 2003, probably. Yeah, I, I just can't trust a, a cordless one. I actually did have one when they first came out, and it was terrible. It was, like, worse than the cheap Radio Shack one I had. Um, but this Hacko that I have is just... It heats instantly. That's great. I think I said in the last stream it was, like, $80. I can't even find it online anymore. The equivalent that I see now is 160 US, I think. It's worth it. All right, so I've got the LEDs in there. Let's see what's next. Make sure the spacer and LED are at right angles to the PCB. There should be no gap or very little room for movement in the spacer. Did I do that? <laughs> Could have been better. It's like everything loosens once I flip it upside down. It's a little tighter now. Uh, this is from a company called Racket. Um, I'll put the link in the uh, in the video in the chat. Oh. Of course, it would help if I press the right keyboard shortcuts. Cold heat soldering iron. I think that's what it was. It was, it was awful. All right, all the resistors in this kit are installed vertically to aid in insertion. Gently bend the leg around as shown. Resistors are not polarity sensitive and can hence be installed any way around. Additionally, once the resistor is inserted, bending the legs outward as shown will stop them dropping out during soldering. Oh, that's a good tip. Radio Shack marketed them heavily. I think I got mine at Canadian Tire, or maybe it was a gift, but it ended up being terrible. There's a lot of resistors here. Oh, this is gonna take a bit. <laughs> Just even finding all the spots where these go is 
going to take forever. I just want to, before I go further with the uh, resistors, just want to check if there's anything else mentioned. A nicely seated resistor with a body in the silkscreen circle, not critical most of the time, but might be useful in fault finding later on. Okay, so they want it flush against the board in a nice loop. Are they not labeled? Well, it does, it does come with this. So, the problem is my eyesight. <laughs> uh, what is that? Green? Well, the only... I mean, the kind of the good thing is that a, a lot of them are not the same color. Like, they're they're all kind of this blue or green body color. But then I think the actual stripes are, at least this one is different from all the others. Green, blue, black, red. All right, so. I'm going to give this a nice cute bend. Let's try that. Usually they put them in separate bags and write the value on it. You have to check. You're not making any mistakes now. Yeah, one thing that I wish they would have done was in this little card, put in like how many of each are there. And even like they're all attached here, but just a little note of what it is that would speed things up. But yeah, just double, triple checking, it's important. So I'm looking for 56k first. I just chose one at random because it was the one that was there is only was single. Do I also code in Lua for Reaper? I don't, not really. I can't retain that knowledge. I've done a little bit. Yeah, sometimes they put spares. That would be a good point. I know I've got a, I've got actually a, a bin of sp spare parts that I could probably replace anything here with, but it'd be much more difficult to uh, find all all the pieces again. This looks like red, yellow, black. Nope, <laughs> what is that? Is that brown, black, ba black? Could be that. Brown, black, black, orange. Yeah, so that's 100k.
If you want to watch me sort them, you can do that, but I'm just doing the ones that are um, singles first, and then the one that the ones that are attached. And if I can't find the spot, then then uh, well, it is what it is. Um, all right, so this is a hundred k that I'm looking for on the board. the closest to what I'm looking at. Brown. It looks like brown, black, black, yellow. Which means it's got to be... I guess that could be 1M. Ah, I'll just measure it. So, multimeter set at 2M, and I'm getting 0.98, so it must be 1M. So, good thing I checked, because that, that was, that would have been the wrong one. So. cat's going all over the place. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to just keep track of where it is. My cat's not that comfortable with me yet, so ha that hasn't happened yet. What the hell? Getting anything on this. OK. 
Okay, measuring this, I'm not seeing what this should be. Um, yellow, brown, black, yellow. It's gotta be yellow, pink. so hard to not give her people food, I gotta stop. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to give the pets people food. Then they'll be fat like us. So this is 4M7. And that's why I couldn't measure it, because my multimeter only goes to 2M. How old is this kid? Uh, I don't know. No idea. I'd have to like look at the metadata for the PDF probably. Good to have you here, Russell. I I don't tend to do soldering streams, but uh, we had one stream last week where I had broken something and figured I'll never get around to fixing it if I don't just do it on stream. Yeah, I mean, this isn't... I'm getting to the point where I, I could probably go for a break, but I think I'm fine for a bit. Brown, black, black, yellow. Where that orange? <laughs> uh, these colors are so like pale. Or is that is that orange, white, black, black? Orange, oh, there is an orange, white, black, black. Okay, so let's measure that to check. K position should work for this, but it's not. As far as I can tell, this is a orange, white, black, black. It's 390 R. What would an R mean? Or is that just how they labeled it?
Oh, I can't find it. Three ninety. Okay. Why would there be a comma, though? Like 1.8 ohm? Is that what you mean? This one just says 390R. But I, I couldn't measure it at all on my multimeter. It just says 390R. I'm confused what the R me means. Like, it should be ohms, but. But yeah, so I'm just. I got to go by the color code, but it's kind of tricky. This one's probably too tall. Well, I guess it might be fine. All right, so 220K, and this is red, red, black, orange, and there's one, and so there should be one other 220 here. 220 is there, and I'm not seeing any other 220s. Pretty confident with that. Almost dropped it. Had it, and I lost it. Where is it?
So I've got two orange, orange, black, red, which is 33K. I think I just need to go wider angle here. I can see everything. What are we listening to? This is uh, backing track. It's royalty free, stream safe music. You can go to backingtrack.gg to get all the links to that. Uh, this particular album is Echoes of Annihilation. A uh, new Reaper version is available right now. Right on. Let me check that. I've been waiting for it. Sweet. Okay. So I know what I'm doing tomorrow. Thank you, Power Metal, for letting me know. I've got a, a finished video that's been waiting, but I'd like to probably get the, um, the what's new video at first. Yeah, so this update has limiting when rendering with normalization and relimit a new Reaper plugin. Brick wall limiter has a nice graph and stuff. What was this? 33K. <sighs> Yeah, the, uh, that What's New series always does well. So I'm, I'm gl glad I got one, one series that makes money. Basically, that means that we get to buy gear, put it together, do more creative stuff outside of those videos. I think I've recouped like six dollars from <laughs> from buying a Korg uh, Minilog from videos. So you know, at least I mean, if I look at what the uh, the videos I use a certain piece of gear in make, then uh, should probably quit. <laughs> Okay, yellow, red, black. I'm guessing 
I mean, why can't they just make them white? Like, why make them with blue stripes on blue? So I guess this is green, blue, black, red. Kinda looks like that. That's the closest. So, four 56Ks. Didn't I already do 56k? Hmm, this might be my first mistake. Unless I'm reading this wrong. Yellow, purple, black. Let's measure it to be sure. Uh, should be 4.7k. Okay, so this is labeled, this, this is confusing. They got 47k and 4.7k 4 marked as 4k7. So I'm looking around for the wrong label. Okay, there should be four of those. Resistors. Definitely the most tedious part so far. everyone left to update their reaper
Yeah. Lo-fi beats to solder too, something. Got a chunk on the soldering iron that won't come off. Uh, where was I? Four points. Oh yeah, it's it's like Lo-Fi Girl. Is that what it is? I always wonder how do how do those channels make money? How can they afford to to just run nonstop? Like, are people donating enough that? They can keep a feed going. Are people paying to get their music on there. Is it royalty-free music that they wrote, and then by playing it on Spotify, they're like making themselves money? How does that work? Are there ads on those channels? There's a uh, a Doom version of that. Have you seen that? It's like Doom inspired music. I think the actual soundtrack might be on there too. soldering my solder spool is somehow like tangled tied in knots I feel like my back is hurting a lot, <laughs> so I feel like I might take a break here. Um, I put these resistors away for now and um, clean up some of this mess. Then. I don't know. Let's update, update Reaper and check out what's new. Come back to this in a little bit.
Sorry about the shaky camera, guys. Um, that'll work. Okay, so let's uh, take a break from this and update Reaper. Yeah, I'm excited to hear this thing too. I wonder if it like comes pre-circuit bent, essentially. I'll probably try to circuit bend it as well once it's all together. All right, so um, what's new in Reaper? Change log. Um, duplicate selected items obey item grouping creates new groups when originals are grouped. Oh, I reported that one. That's a good one to fix. Um, expand, select track height, minimize others, bugs. Most of these are just fixes so far. Actually, it's it's easier to look at it on the website. <laughs> and gruntling users since 2005. Nice name. So this is easier for me to read. So relimit, there's a new brick wall limiter plugin. You can embed the UI, you can resize it. It's got a, a nice, has a nice UI. So let's have a look at that first. Brick wall limiter, you can resize it. You can link the threshold and ceiling sliders. True peak aware. There's a release control. Um, I actually need to look into how this works because it was not, um, it's not what I expected. It's not, release is not usually marked as decibels per second. Uh, it's usually, you know, milliseconds. And then there's a low latency and a high quality mode. Um, where'd that go? The <clears throat> most built-in plugins now support multi-channel, multi-mono, multi-stereo modes. All right, so let's look at that. Um, that's this plugin window. Um, track channel count, set this to four. We can 
set this plugin to have four channels and that automatically sets it to multi-channel, multi-mono, or multi-stereo. These, these things have been in works for probably about a month, something like that. And if we set this plugin channel to two, we've got stereo, multi-mono, and multi-stereo. Um, not really sure about multi what multi-stereo means. I think it could just be the labeling. But yeah, so this is a little more dynamic, more cool options. Uh, there's an update utility? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, you can find that on the forum or in, uh, might be in Repack. Just try searching update. It's really nice. Um, it works with the um, beta releases as well. Uh, embedded UI, I haven't tried that one. So let's... How do I do that again? Effects chain, show em embedded in TCP. What does that actually do? Control threshold. Um, what are your other questions here? Pin connector improvements are cool. Pin display must be new. Yeah, just the channel count function. Um, I mean, the pins have been here for a long time. Um, but yeah, the, these these options at the bottom are new. Also reset. Are these new? Or, I think these are recent, if not added in this version. Anyway. So that, that's um, added to all of the Kakos plugins, or most of them. So uh, regate, for example. Uh, set this to four channel mode. And then we've got four inputs and then, is that right? What if we set the plugin channel to 10? Yeah, we still don't really have more inputs here, but. Maybe we have to do that. No. I don't know. I'll have to look into this and, and actually test it. But that's just something that's new. So change channel, channel count via dropdown rather than plus and minus buttons. Yeah, that's what it was before. And multi-mono and stuff. Improved loudness meter again. Improved oscilloscope again. Loudness meter integrated values. LUFS I, LRI, LRA, and RMSI. Only update when playing back. Support regular peak in addition to true peak metering and loudest meter. Update flanger preset. What does that mean? Run preset loading synchronously with audio processing. That's something that I need more details on. I, I think that means that it's not going to interrupt the audio when you change a preset. It's not going to click. I don't know for sure. Yeah, display was zoomed. Sorry. I actually have to fix it so that it's not in the wrong position. It's supposed to be top.
Okay, duplicate selected items, obey item grouping, creates new groups when originals are grouped. Okay, so this I can demonstrate. Uh, so we've got two tracks and put in some items. Oops. Group them. Um, you know, if you split them, these are an independent group, right? But if we duplicate, I think I'm using a different duplicate action than the normal. Yeah, duplicate items. What I was doing before was having all four items linked together, which is pretty useless. So now it makes a new group after you duplicate. So they should be still grouped in columns across tracks, but not left to right. So um, Jeremy says the preset loading will happen between audio buffers instead of the middle of audio processing. That's cool. Yeah, Reaper change logs, 90% of it, I don't understand unless I've been spending the last month on the the forum, uh, you know, just looking at the discussion and trying to keep up. A lot of these have links to other posts or forum posts, bug reports and things. So, uh, Reverb's been updated. Let's have a look at that. I've already forgotten what was now. What was now? Channel tool to allow combining multiple files by channel. What does that mean? Channel tool. Source channel up to 64, channel count, action, swap, copy, add to, subtract from. Interesting. Huh. Okay. Load channel count configuration for presets. Reverse impulse modifier can be apply to all channels or a single channel. All right, so I guess I'll have to load in a file. All right, so this started out as mono, and then with a channel tool, source channel, and I want four channels. And I want to copy, add to, no, let's do two channels. I'm a little confused. Okay, and then there's a reverse tool that can apply to a certain channel. Okay. Kind of interesting. It's nice to see any improvements to this. Yeah, so that's something I'll demonstrate for sure. Is it smoother transition between the presets? I don't know. Um, so who has an example of where that could be noticed between previous version and now?
Yeah, more more crash safe safe is good. All right, so when rendering under normalize, there's a brick wall limit function, peak or true peak, and then the ceiling amount. So that's cool. So normalize will basically be like the boost that you put into it, and then the, the limit, um, let's say minus one, true peak is um, no, minus 14, not plus 14. Yeah, so most people don't need to use that, but it's cool that it's there. Uh, they said, fix peaks display with very short files. That's interesting. Um, the last couple of videos I've rendered have been... Uh, the the peaks display has just been missing after, like, a couple minutes. Which, you know, the files come out fine, but it's a little weird. And I didn't report the bug, so I wonder if that's related to that. I don't know. There's also a brick wall limiter in the batch converter. And so if you don't know, batch converter is under the file menu. And then they added normalize in the last update, I think, or the, or the one before that. So we normalize and brick wall limit, same as in the render window. So that's always good for um, You've already exported files from Reaper or they came from somewhere else and you just need to make a quick change like applying an effect to it or something and then normalize it to have it consistent. Add advanced project preference default enabled to prevent Bezier envelope segments from being affected by proceeding following non-Bezier points. Um, so that's under preferences project? No. That sounds like an envelope thing, but it's the way that they say it. Oh, no, it's, it's in here. It's in project settings. Bezier envelope segments are affected by surrounding non-Bezier points. I'm not sure where that would come up. Did anyone, anyone make sense of that? Yeah, um, having randomization for for LFOs would be cool or a sample and hold modulation would be really cool uh, Jeremy you probably won't be able to post the link in the chat um but you can post it in Discord or on Twitter or something like that. CC reset on playback stop is enabled by default. Is that in here? Now enabled by default. Reset. Right, th that was in my last video, right? That's, uh, where is that one?
I don't remember where that is. Playback? Yeah, these. I don't remember which, what the default was there. It seems like a good thing to have enabled by default. It's, it's pretty rare to see defaults change. Allow pressing copy modifier key after mouse down, but before initial mouse move. Okay, I think that makes sense. For the razor edit. So if you want to copy, you can add in the command key after you press the, the button, instead of having to press it first. So either way. Uh, Re-EQ now supports 64 channels. Update display after resizing when not processing audio. There was a bug with Re-X Comp that, that isn't shown here, but it should be fixed. So if you have Re-X Comp, I ran into this in a video. So, okay, so I can grab any of these and move them. Right? If I resize, I wasn't able to move them after. It seems fixed now. So, that's good. But that was, yeah, that was, uh, it's something that only I reported and they fixed it the next day. Actually, let's. See if I can find the GIF of it. Um, So not a big problem, but like imagine trying to explain multiband compression with recomp, re-x comp, uh, and you can't move any of the the bands after resizing. Kind of uh, frustrating. Uh, okay. Fix Big Sur save dialogue behavior when exporting to project types other than RPP. What does that mean? I don't think they've they've fixed some of the things. There's some really weird bugs with uh, not well, maybe it's not even a bug. Some weird graphic things with Big Sur that I do not like. Like this window here. Why is this so long? And if you hit no. And then let's quit the project. You get this. This is so ugly. So I've reported that multiple times, but still not fixed. I haven't seen that issue in any other uh, any other software.
Yeah, I don't think there's anything else that's really too interesting. But I'll go through this another t time. I haven't seen Mike for half an hour or so. This is my own custom theme. I need my coffee too. <laughs> I didn't eat lunch yet, or breakfast actually. I'm fading fast, but I'm making progress on this, so I want to keep going. So we're on red, red, black, red for a 22k. I got four of them, and I see. I guess you can't see this yet. I should be making lunch, but I don't know. When am I gonna have uh, time to build this? All right, 22K. Oh, you can't see it. This is not the same position it was before. That'll work, I guess. So I'm looking on the board for um, 20, 22K. Let's see, one, two, three.
Is that a super chat? Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Starting the lunch fund. It's funny. Well, the, the problem is I still don't want to, like, eat on stream. But I definitely appreciate that. Back when I first learned about, like, soldering and, uh, circuit bending and stuff, I would just spend my days off just, like, non-stop doing this. Either making something, breaking something, dismantling. And the uh, hours would go by without even realizing it. And I dropped one. Pretty sure there are people who would pay to watch me eat cereal. Yeah, that sounds like a good time. So one fell out and I lost where it went. Where does it go? It is. No, I gotta get the door. My wife's going to get it. Amazon delivery. Fell out again. Drink coffee. Yeah. I should put the kettle on. All right, so yeah, there's a couple more. This is the grind of the day. Um, All right, so this has got to be brown, black, black, brown, brown. Because I don't think there's a brown, no. Brown, brown, black, black. 
1k is there five of them music stopped The next time I try to <laughs> save some money on uh, I'm buying gear, by like buying a kit, maybe I won't. <laughs> this is this is tedious. Lunch fund, that's too nice, guys. But I'll, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna eat here today. But um, yeah, we'll do a pizza party <laughs> or something. The donation will be put to good use for sure. I will put this towards buying a second one of these cameras so I can have like a a permanent fancy uh, top-down camera for kits and stuff because that's not cheap.
I mean, maybe it doesn't bother you guys, but it bothers me to have have a a blurry camera or camera that's not like at at a good angle. It's just. Well, actually, are you bothered by me moving the camera? while it's visible. Because I don't like doing it. I don't like seeing it, so I would be annoyed. Um, OBS Ninja. It's not called OBS Ninja anymore. It's uh, VDO. Ninja, video ninja. Um, I have used it. Um, yeah, it's cool. I, th I think I may have used that that time when, when I accidentally used all of my phone's bandwidth for a month within an hour. Doorbell again. So, um, just some gear delivered. I'll show you what I got. they discontinued it since I, I last bought monitor stand wow it seems like it's just not on Amazon anymore I'll have to go to my purchases and show you All right, so uh, it's just one of these. That <laughs> this camera is really not showing me at all. Oh well, um, it's just I've got two of these now. Um, I've been using one for about a month, and I've been waiting for a price to drop for a second one, and they had a used one. Uh, actually, now they've got three used ones. Um, so what I'm going to do is use this as um, speaker stands. So I've got two of these 24 inch ones. So it's going to be speaker stands and you know light clamps and all that other junk. But my actual monitors are 
on uh, one's on a an arm and one is on uh, one's that just like leaning there you can see this chunk of wood here that's let's go to the webcam oh upside down so camera is there speakers there it's way too low um, yeah that's all I'm constantly changing my gear around I could just pull up the order but I didn't want you to see all my other things I like how the doorbell sounds like an office from, from the 80s. Yeah, well, it is the door uh, buzzer is an actual phone, so <coughs> that explains it. We bought the cheapest phone we can get, like, just for something that works on the landline. Storage bins underneath for electronics components. They're going to be mostly covered up I think um, so my my plan is to have like my desk is six feet wide so I'm gonna have the two um, stands at the back and then I'll have my monitors in the middle and I might have some space I haven't really thought about that I, I can't imagine it right now because of the way my desk is currently set up, so, but maybe tomorrow for the stream, I will be, um, maybe we'll do that for the stream. I don't know. I don't have any lessons on the, on the schedule yet, so don't know. My electronics components and stuff are actually in my big toolbox. Oh yeah, I was going to make food. So, I'll be right back. Okay, food is started. I will eat in four minutes. Music stop again.
can't tell which one this is. This looks like there's one red stripe. This has got to be 10k. I feel like this is going a lot faster than it was at first. Um, I'm able to focus a lot more now, even with more distractions. I got one more and I can't find it. I was saying there might be extras. Doesn't seem to be any extras for any of these. Just one of each. I can't find it. <laughs> I've been staring at this for like five minutes. So this one thing.
Yeah, I just can't find this. Where is it? There's lots of 100Ks, but can't find any more 10Ks. Oh, there it is. Okay. Be right back. so you don't hear me eat. Okay, so up next, I think I think there's just two resistor values left, 100k and 47k. <clears throat> Brown, black, black, orange is this one. That's the 100k. Eleven of them.
So it looks like we're not going to have enough time to actually finish this today. Uh, there's still quite a lot of components. They're all larger ones, but still, I don't think I'll be able to finish this by 2 o'clock. So this, what am I putting in here? 100k. the banks. Um, Stalin Green, is this open source? I don't think so. It's a kit. I'll show you, uh, there's a website for it. I got it on an Etsy for, I don't know, it was pretty cheap, $60 maybe. Um, we've been working on this for a couple hours, three hours. I would say it's probably an hour left, 
but I don't have a full hour to work on it, so might actually I think we might actually stop um, after the resistors. I don't know. It's gonna actually be close. I gotta I have to leave at two o'clock here, and it's one eight, one nineteen here right now. Uh, Vassal says, "Please, could you tell? Do you sell music on music stocks? Can you ask that a different way? I don't understand." Do I sell my music? I don't. I was thinking about it. I could put an album together of music that I made, but... I don't know. Wouldn't want to get my hopes up that someone would actually buy it. That was, wasn't my intention of making it. Can't see what I'm doing. First burn of the day. Very mild though. Okay. I gotta clip off some of these leads because they're just getting in the way now. If anyone's wondering about the music in the background today, that's backingtrack.gg. It is stream safe, royalty free, metal music. No, this is... This is a free service. I think it's pretty decent. It's not that far off what I, from what I listen to normally, but uh, 
I don't listen to stuff that's as heavy and instrumental usually. One more set of resistors. I think there's probably 10. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Okay. It gets kind of cramped with all the leads sticking out. I'll just do four right now. So I was asking before, um, maybe an hour or so ago, what was the first soldering project you ever did? Or, or what got you into electronics? Have, are you into it? Have you done it at all? Um, I figure it's, if you're here, you must have a bit of interest in it. Um, and I was saying that my first one was a in like shop class, or electronics shop in high school, I built a kit for a strobe light. And I've been fairly interested in electronics ever since, but I don't do a lot of kit building or anything. I, I use it for like repairing, um, Repairing things around the house or musical equipment, and, and you can find a lot of good deals on stuff that's kind of broken. And um, something that really kept my interest up was circuit bending, where you take something, some, something that makes sound like a kid's toy, a Furby, a Speak and Spell, things like that. Okay, so you Casio keyboard, and then you find places where. You can manipulate the sound by adding a switch, adding a potentiometer, or contact plate. Creative short circuiting, you call it. And uh, I did that quite a lot after high school. I made a sample library, I sold some of the things that I made or modified. In college, I made a fuzz pedal. Yeah, soldering is such a good skill to have. Um, whether you're like building your own cables, or fixing a broken jack on something, replacing guitar pickups. There's so many uses for it. Even if you don't understand all of the the theory and everything. Um, it's a really good skill to have. I'm inclined to say that it's a skill everyone should have. Any musician or audio engineer should be able to handle a soldering iron for basic repairs. 
or building an adapter, something like that. But some people might say it's not necessary anymore. It's better to learn code. And I don't really disagree with that either. For a moment, I thought that was all the resistors, but no, I still have eight more. I think I'll do two at a time, Get a little easier. Anyone else here want to share it, what their first electronics project was? Or, uh, or what it will be if you haven't started yet? Swapping guitar pickups is a great example of an easy project. All right, so there's a bunch of people talking now. Um, soldering is the most necessary skill for an owner of the SM58 or 57. Yeah, changing that, doing that transformer mod, taking out the transformer or swapping with a different one to get a, to get a different sound. Um, let's talk about Reaper says, I remember the first electronics project I ruined for sure. Yeah, so for me, the first one I remember ruining was a Yamaha SPX90. Is that right? I think it's Yamaha. A great multi-effect that I probably spent too much money on. I was getting some amazing sounds trying to circuit bend it. I did the wrong short circuit and blew it up and it never worked again. And I don't remember where it went. If I sold it as is or what? Maybe I'd, I don't think I dismantled it for parts. But yeah, that, that was a real bummer. It was sounding so amazing and then went boom. <laughs> I think it deafened me at the same time as uh, as ex as uh, killing itself. Uh, okay, so roving eye said. Swapped out switches in my wireless mouse to fix a double click issue. Oh, I've done that too. I had a Logitech mouse that I wore out the button on it, playing Diablo too. And multiple times I had to replace the button on it. Um, yeah, so could kill the half for that. Is a Logitech? Yeah. I've had a few that I've... I think I've had two mouse mice that I've needed to 
repair like that. Um, so I'd like get the buttons from other broken mice or buttons that I don't use on some of them. But eventually those mice just stop working entirely like because of uh, software, things like that. And who else was there? The iron paid for itself at that point. Yeah. You definitely, you feel great when you're able to do simple repair. <clears throat> um, Jason says, haven't done any electronic soldering. Worked on some pump motors on freighters though. That's cool. Yeah, like, I couldn't do any, like, industrial applications um, for soldering. <clears throat> I've made my, no my own extension cords. Coffee delivery. Oh, it's so hot. I know. You made a strobe light as well? Cool. Um, <clears throat> what? You're in Ontario, aren't you? I think it's unlikely we went to the same school or anything, but. Yeah, made my own PCV as well. The etching thing was pretty cool. I don't think mine worked that well. I was really ugly. Remember that, but yeah, it was it was cool playing with chemicals in uh, electrical class, Alberta. So it was probably like similar curriculum, different parts of the country. Totally forgot about etching. I remember um, I would fold a piece of solder and then stick it into the electrical outlets on the um, the benches. And then when the teacher turns on the main power for the room, they'd all explode. The solder would explode. It wouldn't actually damage anything. That's probably the sort of thing that messing around too much. Shocking themselves with the power supplies. Yeah, we never did that. In the, uh, did like a small engine class or something like that? In, in that class, they were, uh, showing us how to charge a capacitor and discharge it on someone, which is always <laughs> so safe. Welding is something I've never tried. Which stuff to use to clean the tip of soldering iron during soldering? Um, my stand has a, a wet sponge and some like steel wool sort of th stuff. Um, it's actually not really working that well today. I've been trying not to use um, the, the paste flux. Um, it's corrosive and I end up getting like 
plastic bits and stuff in it. Uh, so, a lot of my soldering stuff uh, I probably bought in 2003, maybe. My better stuff would have been after moving to Vancouver. Okay, so that's all the resistors. I don't know if there's enough time for anything else. What material is the sponge? I don't, I don't really know. It seems like just a regular sponge. Um, it's what co comes with the soldering iron. It's not like abrasive, it's a pretty soft one. What was I looking for? Oh yeah, the... I lost the instructions. <clears throat> Alright. So, next is trim pots. Yeah, I think even like a kitchen sponge would be fine as long as it doesn't like instantly melt. And if it's wet, it helps. Actually, mine's not even wet anymore. All right. So, trim pots, are they the same? I think they're the same. So, um, these little things, trim pots, they're the same as these but smaller and they're not meant to be like adjusted frequently, just kind of like a calibration. So, um, pretty straightforward. There's triangular shape and plug it in. I think it probably is brass. It's it's uh it's not copper. So brass makes sense. And it's coarse. I don't know. You can buy little cups with that in it. If you just search for soldering accessories, you kind of find what stuff you find useful after you try it. I didn't find the, um, for desoldering, I didn't find the, uh, the wicking copper to be very useful. Um, but the little suction things work pretty well. And I've never tried one of the actual things that heat up and suck at the same time.
All right, so what's left is box capacitors, which are these. A bunch of switches and jacks. Well, what I don't like about the the wick is that you always forget to use uh, pliers to hold it. So a lot of times you just like, it just goes right up into your thumb or something. They heat up fast. All right, so box capacitors. Thanks for stopping by, I really, really appreciate it. Well, I have no clue how these are marked. Where they should go. I guess I just have to go with a picture. Four seven N K one hundred. Now I see markings like one N, twenty two N, forty seven N. I guess that's it. The three of those. Yeah. Okay. So these are these are not polarity sensitive, so they can go in any direction. It's good. Yeah, so much for the one hour time limit. Well, I kind of knew I was going to go most of the day. The hardest part about the streams is often just getting started.
three and three. All right, so this is the last set of uh, the box capacitors. There's four left. And then we're on to the larger switches and pots. Pretty exciting to be almost done this project. It's been on my shelf for like two months. Wanted to do it. Knew I knew I I don't know. Knew I wanted to do it on a stream. going to be so dissatisfying when it doesn't work when I get it finished or when I realize I don't have a 9 volt battery when I power it and it starts to smoke or something that would be fun alright yeah so that's all the components other than the um, what do you call it switches there's looks like four switches four pots three jacks but yeah i do have to go though
So unfortunately, we can't finish it today. Super close to finishing it. So tomorrow, let's say, uh, meet here again. We will do getting it into the enclosure, all the last of the parts, and then trying it out. That'll be tomorrow plus um, plus maybe doing a little bit of a studio rearrange. Um, yeah, but if this doesn't work tomorrow, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to get into troubleshooting it on stream, I don't think. Because... I mean, it's it's just super looking super closely at it and making sure that I've got all the right resistors or whatever. So, um, let's go to the screen. Huge thanks to my patrons and my YouTube members. Um, they make streams like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will I'll see you guys. Later this week, uh, I have a video made already. I plan on streaming tomorrow and um, also doing a What's New in Reaper video this week. Uh, haven't started that yet, but pretty soon. All right. So thanks again. I'll see you next time.